welcome to a new edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today I'm going to try a new type of puzzle. Um, this one has been sent to us by Laura Sola uh, and Xavier Seurat, who, um, both of whom have had puzzles featured on the channel before, and I think they've been collaborating on a hybrid of Star Battle and Sandwich Sudoku. Um, so the suggested names I've seen for this puzzle are Between Stars and um, Galaxy Sandwich, I think was the other one. Um, maybe you guys, if you think of a better name, could suggest it to us. I quite like Battlestar, um, but that's because I like Battlestar Galactica. Um, but let me talk to you about how this puzzle works. So the idea is that we need to place the numbers from 1 to 7 uh, and 2 stars in each row, column and 3 by 3 box, such that the stars don't touch each other, even diagonally, with the numbers outside the grid telling us the sum of the cells sandwiched between the stars in the relevant row and column. So that is our challenge. Now if you want to take the challenge before you watch me try the challenge, um, then do uh, click on the link under the video that will take you to our software and you can have a go at the puzzle uh, just as I'm going to do now. Um, so without further ado, I'm Let's go. Now, I guess 1 to 7 must add to 28. Yes, yeah, so t the place I'm looking at starting is column 2 because the number 28 is the sum of the numbers from 1 to 7 and therefore this square here is going to have to be a star as is this one. I'm going to use red to indicate stars and I'm going to use green to indicate cells that definitely therefore cannot contain stars. So we get, it's going to be an interesting sort of colour experiment, I think, solving this. Um, now, well actually, and if there are two stars in every 3x3 three three box, there can never be a star in the middle of a 3x3 three three box. So let's mark all the central squares as starless uh, and Bible black as Dylan Thomas once wrote in Under Milk Wood, I think. Um, now, well, I suppose these two squares don't have stars either. Now, 23. I think if there was a star in any of these three squares, there wouldn't be enough room to make 23 because the outies would have to sum to 5 and the most number of cells I could use um, to create 5 would be 2 because obviously I, the minimum 3 cell total would be 6 with 1, 2 and 3 so none of these can be stars and none of these can be stars so there is a star obviously in one of these squares and ah, hang on Ah, hang on, look, there is something very clever going on in the centre here. Look at this, we, need, we have to fill in cells totalling 6 between the stars in the central row. Now, we've already got a 1 and a 2 in this row. So, the only way this could work is if there was a star here and a star here, and this square here was a 3, and that would give us 1, 2, 3 making 6. Obviously any 2 cell total would have to include the 1 and the 2 and can't because all these 3 squares are green. But if we did have this arrangement and this was a 3, look what happens. It breaks because we'd have to have all of those squares and all of those squares green and in the central row we'd have two star a central column would have two stars like this sandwiching a three but look the sandwich total here is seven so this is I suspect going to be the, the thing that we needed to spot in order to um, make immediate progress so as there cannot be stars in these two positions the six total must be a single cell total which means that either this square and this square 
our minds, or stars I suppose, or this square and this square are stars. Now, let me think about that for just a second. Um, that feels like that is important. Yeah, because, hang on a second, this square, we have a 12 total in column 1. So if this square was a star, we, we're broken, because we need at least two cells to make 12, and you can see, if I try and put a star here, the furthest away I could put, and the, the next star would be one cell. So that just is not correct. This cell is green. And therefore, this square is also green because we need the six total to be one. And we get two stars over there. That is some lovely logic there. Um, so, we find this situation with this square being six. Um, so there must be... Ah, now, this total here ah yeah this is clever as well look at this three total so if the three is not one cell i.e. we're not going um, mine well mine three mine then it would have to be two cells and to make two cells add up to three there would have to be one and two so but the only way I can split and make a two cell sum work would be if this square is included in the sum, because I'd either have to have a, um, a star here or here, so this square would have to be included in the summation, and there's already a 1 and a 2 in the row, so actually this 3 has to be on its own, has to be in this square, and has to be surrounded by stars. That is really cool as well, and that's going to mean we get green, green, these two squares now must be the mark, the, the stars in the central 3 by 3 and they must have a 7 between them. These two squares must add up, must be 4 and 5. I don't know much more than that, I think. And these squares are not stars and therefore there's a star here and a star here. This square can't be a star because there must be some outies in row uh, 3. And I guess the same is going to be true. Look, sorry, row 7. The same is going to be true of row 3. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Ah, now this square can't be a star because this square sees the open squares. And we'd only be able to put one star in. So... There's a star in one of those positions and a star in one of those positions. Now, if there's a star in one of these two positions, there cannot be a star in one of those two squares. And this four total, I guess four could be one and three in this. This could never be a star, so let's put, let's rule that out. Ah, and this six total is important. Six could be three cells, so it's possible these two squares would be in the sum. The furthest away the star could be in row 9 is here. So these squares are not stars. And now this square can't be a star because of the same logic that we used up, up there. So this square becomes a star. This is a brilliant puzzle. Um, and now I get another star. And now this must be a 4 total between, between the two stars there. This is a 9 total. These can't be stars anymore. This must therefore be a star. The 17 total here cannot only be one cell large. So, well, actually, we've got the two stars there. So, we get two more stars in the central. So this is not a star. This is a star. This must be a 7. We've got stars here. We, need, we just need to find the two stars in this bottom box. I think we should be able to do that because of the star here, yes. So that is the configuration, I think, of the stars. 
And now we need to work on the Sudoku. So first thing to do is going to be to look for all of the simple numbers. Let's pick those off. So da, da. well, this is a simple number because of the outie total. If I've got 21 between the stars, I must have seven outside the stars. So that's going to be a seven. Similarly here, I need I need the cells outside the stars to add up to five, and there are there are two cells outside, and we have a one here. So this must be a two, and this must be a three. The six total here, look, must be one, two, and three. So must be a one and a two there, and a one and a two there. Twenty-three here. So again, these two cells are adding up to five, twelve. 3, 23, done that 3, 28 isn't helpful, 17, ah, hang on, this 17 might be helpful because that means this cell and this cell have got to sum up to 11 without using a 7, so they, these two squares are 5 and 6 therefore, done the 3, the 24 here means this square is a 4, the only, we know that obviously 24 plus 4 is 28, which is important. There's a 4 there as well, just because of the 4 that's plain, plainly stated, and a 6 here. So we need these two squares to be 3 and 5. Uh, this 4 here forces a 4 at the top, just by straightforward Sudoku. And these three squares, therefore, must be 1, 5, 6. And we've got a 1 and a 6 already in column 4. So that's a 5. And if this must be a 7. Again, that's normal Sudoku. Nothing cunning about that. Uh, and this 17 total now, we've already got... Well, this must be 1, 3, and this must be 1, 3. So that's actually resolvable as well now because of the 3 in column 3 already. Again, normal Sudoku allows us to place a 3 here, because of the 3 there as well, and a 3 here. And that's probably where we run out of 3s, because we can only lock one into one of those two squares. Um, ah, but that's still helpful, because of this 23 total. So this must be a 2-3 pair, because we know the outies add up to 5 in 2 cells. 2, 3, 12 without using a 3 in 4 cells. That's quite interesting, isn't it? He says, I guess the other way of thinking about this is that these 3 squares need to add up to 16 using a 3. So these 2 squares have to add up to 13, which means they must be 6 and 7. And this must be 1, 2, 4, and 5. We've got a 2 in this box already, so that gets 2 here. There must be a 2 now in one of these two squares, so this square can no longer be a 1. Uh, 2, 3. So we've done 2s, we've done 3s. Must be a six in one of those two squares. Let's highlight that. Three five pair here, so this is not five. So it must be a six and a seven along here. And look, we have a six and a seven already in column eight. So the six and seven must be in those two squares exactly. This must be a 4 or a 5, and this must be a 4 or 5. Now that's nice, that gives us a 4-5 pair in column 1, which makes this top, that means a 6 and a 5 must be like that. And maybe I have to go back to using my sums now. This can't be a 4. I love this puzzle though, this is brilliant. I have got another one as well, so Xavier sent me a, what he described as being a hard one of these. Um, 
So if you guys agree and you like uh, you like how this solves, then I will try and do that as a video at a later date as well. Now the seven and the six can be unwound. Uh, six must be here because of that simple Sudoku. Fours, fives. So the remaining open cells in this three by three block are one, two, and seven. One, two and seven, and this seven here means this is a one or a two. Uh, I feel like I need to go back to the totals, I have to say. So let's just check. So we actually we've used all of the row totals now, so that is not going to be the place to make progress. Um, but maybe we can use the column totals because we know there's a 7 in this 12 sum therefore the other two cells must add up to 5 without using a 3 so in fact this is 7, 1, 4 and this 5 is impossible so that was what we needed to do can't have a 2 in here, that's impossible the 2 must be in that, that square there that means this is a 2 by normal Sudoku rules Put 1 and 6 into these two squares. Let's put that in just to keep a track. This must be 4 and 5. We have 5 there, so 5 and 4 in that order. This is a 1 now. Uh, this must be a 4. This is a 5. This is a 4. This is a 1 5 pair here, so we can remove the 5 this square and hopefully there's a 5 6 pair there. So still getting through it, we've got a 3 5 pair in column 6. So 6, 5, 6, 1. This is a 4, we've got that 4. 4 and a 2. And if we used all these totals now, 7. Ah, we haven't used this 9 total. I should have used that by now. Yeah, because these two cells add up to 9. I can't put a 3 in here because that would put a 6 there and clash with this. So this is a 7. 7, 2 and 3 in that order. That resolves the 6 and the 7 at the bottom, the 1 and the 6 at the top. Oh, by the way, when you're solving this using the software, don't uh, use the check button. Uh, it won't give you, it won't understand if you have got the correct answer. So hopefully I will have the correct answer. Um, so if you do want to check your answer, probably look at my solution and see if uh, that seems to agree with yours. So there you go, that's how to do the puzzle, loved it. Um, do let us know in the comments if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you're not already subscribers and you enjoy the content, we really appreciate that. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.